Hi, how's it going? Hi, hi Josh. Uh, I'm great. Thanks very much. And you? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you for oh. taking the time to do this interview. Uh, I'm relatively oh. new to the band, but I've been able to discover all of the work that you guys have done so far and absolutely loving what you guys are doing with The Passage coming out next Friday. Thank you very much. I'm really glad to hear about it. So, what went into the writing process for the new album? So, well, the writing process is uh, almost the same since the beginning of the band, even if the, the mastermind has changed during these years. Um, I mean that 100% uh, of the songs uh, uh, has been written, uh, and usually has been written by Simone, and uh, before Simone by Diego. So, um, Simone is the one that writes uh, entirely the songs. Uh, uh, and uh, w once uh, he, he think everything is complete, uh, he, he turned the uh, you know he turned the ball to everyone who has uh, and uh, and ask if everything sounds good, uh, if there's something to change uh, in our opinion. Uh, he's uh, he's not like a dictator. He's like uh, I have my idea in mind, so I prefer to close my idea and then uh, listen to what you have to say before change something. Uh, so this is uh, how. The, the passage worked out. Uh, in general, I have to say that um, every one of us can start uh, writing a song. Uh, I mean, um, uh, since 2007, the things has been has changed a bit uh, with uh, Simone and Marco and Emanuele. Um, every one of us uh, can can put an idea, you know, on on the plate, and then if uh, if this idea is uh, something really good, we can we can start work around it. For example, just a little example, the, the album before, the, the, the previous album, Momentum, uh, Trust has been written, the, the main chorus of one uh, of Trust has been written by Emanuele. Then when, uh, when, when we listened to the chorus, we said, okay, then now we can just work out a song like this. And so Simone started to write all the song, uh, even, even in the previous album, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, that's great. And I'm glad to see that the magic is still happening, uh, despite any lineup changes or just the direction in 2016. It, when I keep listening to the passage, yeah. everything just sounds very fresh and inspired, which I really appreciate. Yeah, um, I have to say that uh, um, we need this change. Yeah, we need this change because uh, even if. Uh, we we always uh, we still think that Diego is a great guitar player, and uh, I'm still playing with Diego in another project, and uh, we are we are still close friends, and Simone and Diego are really good friends, so uh, they talk to each other from time to time, uh, they, they they compare the compositions, so they, but we need a change. After after Diego left, we uh, I think me me and Fabio that. Nowadays we are the oldest one in the band. Um, we were a bit scared about the future of the band because uh, you, you know you have a mastermind like uh, uh, Diego that is uh, absolutely um, a great talent. Uh, we, we didn't think we couldn't find something uh, uh, something like Simone, and Simone brought uh, something a, a more fresh sound, as you said, as you and as you recognize. Uh, uh, from the from different ships, that is the first album with Simone, and even uh, um, uh, I can say a, a jump a jump ahead, uh, a jump forward in the, in the production. So we have to say that we discovered a great uh, musician, uh, one hundred percent, because he is an amazing musician and uh, a great sound producer. Producer, uh, I don't know what to say. And uh, yeah, before yeah. all, before everything is uh, is even sorry. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, that was, that's one thing that is amazing to be able to contribute to the band, is not only being able to contribute musically, but being able to have that producer inside as well, and having that fresh change for the band. Yeah, exactly, because when uh, once Simone entered the band, uh, I have to say that quite um, in, in a natural way, uh, every one of us started to, um, to, uh, to understand what, Simon, uh, what Simone has in mind. So, every one of us changed a bit his sound. So, uh, I started to try something different with my bass, uh, and Emanuele discovered some new stuff on keyboards and tried to experiment a bit more. And uh, even Fabio tried to, uh, to 
push uh, push his rounds uh, on the limit, you know, and uh, it was a real, uh, you know, uh, a kind of refresh we, we needed. Did so <laughs> that's uh, and before before everything, uh, I have to say that we discovered especially a great uh, person, uh, so a great friend and uh, a great man. Uh, with you mentioning that, with uh, trying new things when it comes to playing bass, what would you say are the biggest changes that you've come across in your playing? Uh, with, uh, you mean with Simone? Yes. Uh, um, well, I have to say that um, uh, the, the big difference uh, between uh, this new period of DGM and the previous one uh, is more oriented towards the sound. I had um, I discovered... Uh, uh, how to pay attention uh, to the sound of the of the of the bass on the during the recordings? So um, you know, I, I was um, I, I am I, I'm, I can say I am the trashy guy of the band because I I, uh, I grew up with uh, the old heavy metal stuff, so thrash metal and blah blah blah, blah all, all the things that uh, all, all the guys that, that, that are now thirty nine years old uh, maybe can understand me. Uh, so I, I was uh, I used to to. To play to to have a, a kind of sound that was uh, uh, recognizable for me and that was really close to the uh, um, to the idea yeah of the sound of the bass so a kind of more 80s stuff so when I discovered Simon that told me but try to, to put some of this after here a bit more there so and you can see that the sound can change in this way uh, you can you can change this really under your fingers and I have to say that it, it opens my mind a bit more so uh, this was the main change that I think um, yeah this one in my opinion and what would you say uh, how long would you say it took until the entire band felt comfortable with the direction that the band was going in uh, I think uh, it, it takes a uh, couple of weeks <laughs> because, uh, yeah if I have to be honest um, uh, DJM have been uh, Really lucky because uh, every one of us is uh, uh, a great musician and uh, a great person. So every one of us has the, the the that kind of intelligence that understand uh, right away what is needed and what is the best thing for the band. So we we didn't take long long time to to be comfortable with this new direction. It's something that came up quite uh, easily. I'm glad to hear that as well because. If you're newer to the band like I am, and just being able to see this refreshing sound coming from the band after the great career that you guys have had so far, and just being able to get bigger and better from here, it's just so fantastic to see. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Um, you, you're not the first that, that told us something like that, because uh, most of the... And we, we were scared about it, because most of the of the fan, you know, so what, sometimes people's... Uh, like uh, what you have done till now, but don't appreciate the the, the evolution, you know. Um, and we have been lucky because all the all the old fans uh, appreciate these new these new versions of the gem. So, awesome. Oh, very much so. So, of of course, <laughs> with the new album, uh, you actually had a couple great guest appearances from Tom England and Michael Romero. How did that come about? Uh, well, uh, it, it has been really simple because first of all, we have to say that. Uh, we wanted to have uh, uh, some guests more in this new album, a bit for momentum. Uh, but b before everything, uh, you know, you, you can choose uh, a lot of um, superstar as guests. Uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of rock stars that that, that can push up your uh, your selling points. <laughs> but uh, the, the most important thing for us it, it was that uh, it should be someone that we are really fans of. So. We started to think uh, to all the people that we know uh, that we met during the years uh, of tours and gigs around the world, and the first person uh, that we talked was uh, we talked about was uh, Michael Romeo because we spent more than one month all together touring in um, in the previous uh, Symphony X tour. So uh, and then Simone is a great fan of Michael Romeo, so the, the call was quite uh, was quite uh, natural. And he was really friendly because he said, oh yeah, Simone, for sure, but you have to call me whenever you want, uh, just not so only to, to ask me a solo, you know. Um, so it, this is how, how it works with uh, Michael. Uh, and with Tom, it was also the same because um, after a, 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 I think uh, four or five gigs spent together in, uh, in Belgium and Holland uh, a few years ago, uh, we, we we discovered uh, a great band uh, like Evergrey and uh, even a great person 
mountains like uh, Tom and all the other guys from every way. And then uh, a great friendship started, um, I, I think especially between uh, Simone and Tom, um, even because they had, they had the chance to spend uh, some time together in their, in their second project episode when they, they did a couple of gigs in Europe with this project of Samora Khan and um, the friendship became stronger and so when Simone was writing the, the new songs he thought, uh, he thought that he wanted, uh, he wanted a song like Evergreen Style and he started to write uh, Ghost of Insanity that has been conceived directly from for Tom's voice so when we asked Tom to, to put his voice, he said, yes, that's absolutely no problem at all. So we spent four days in Simon and Simone Studios in San Marino. And uh, I, th I think they spent half an hour to, to record all the songs and uh, the rest of the days in drinking and then uh, out <laughs> for all the days. <laughs> oh, that, that is fantastic. And it's, it's great to see that Michael and Tom love the band enough to be able to want to contribute to the album that way. And yeah. of course, with uh, Ghost of Insanity, I mean, that definitely does have that Recreation Day feeling Evergrave vibe to it as well. And it's great to be able to hear Tom have his presence along with it in tribute. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we, we were also um, really happy because uh, it, it, it didn't... Uh, uh, I mean, he started working at the song not like, ah, okay, I have to do this thing, okay, done. But like, ah, I like, I like this part, okay, ah, let me change a bit the, the vocal sign because uh, you did so, but I prefer to do this stuff. Uh, you use these words, I prefer to use this word here. So, uh, really friendly and really, you know, he, he, he's really in support in the band and uh, this song we wrote, so that's great. And with Ghosts of Insanity being one of the first representations of the album. Do you feel, for someone that's just discovering the band, that it's a good representation of where you guys are right now? Uh, well, I think that the opener, The Secret Part 1 and uh, The Secret Part 2, are maybe the best representation of the band nowadays. Um, that's why, that, that's even why we decided to put uh, so long songs as, uh, as the opener. Openers, uh, you know, Secret Part One and Secret Part Two are are kind of mini suites, but uh, uh, in our opinion, they represent 100% what are the gem nowadays. Uh, they have all the stuff that uh, contributed to the, the gem sound. So you have the, the hard rock stuff, uh, you have the melodies in the chorus, uh, you have the hard riffs, uh, the heavy stuff, uh, and you have the prog parts. So I think that these two songs can be the the best representation of the band. I definitely have to agree. Those first two tracks on the album really do showcase everything that the band is capable of with both parts, from the, the fastest moments to the slowest moments. It's got everything in there. A good we reach our goal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, what are the plans for the band for the rest of the year? Oh, okay. But um, our plans is, um, are to promote at the best the album. So uh, we just released, uh, I just released a few minutes ago, the new website with all the upcoming gigs. So uh, I think in the next days we, we, will, uh, uh, we will spread all the gigs we have uh, through the social because uh, we would like to, to promote uh, more than ever this album, even because uh, Frontiers Records is, is doing a great job in promoting us and pushing up uh, uh, more than other labels did in the past. So we want to contribute to to our careers and we, we want to do our best to this album. Even because we, uh, I, I think we invested a lot of energies for for the passage and in our opinion it's uh, it's nowadays that the most ambitious work we, we we have done until now, so we, we didn't want to uh, to make him fall in a you know in a in a dark basket of uh, uh, and he forget you know um, we, we want to, to keep the the wave of uh, of promotion uh, always high. Yeah, and that's a great way to do that too. And of course, being a part of Frontiers, it has become one of my favorite labels to be able to help promote with. And it's, it's great to see that you're a part of it, and with such a great album as The Passage, I mean, it definitely deserves all the recognition that it's been getting and will be getting when the album comes out. Yeah, and uh, if I have to be honest, it has been 
we are extremely happy of what happened with Frontiers uh, about their, their offers and uh, uh, this multi-album deal. So, but the coincident the coincidence was that uh, we already have the album done. So uh, when when we when they called us to offer this uh, this deal. Uh, we just say yes. We, we are ready for the new album. We, we already have a day. Our oh, great, fantastic. So we, we just set it up the release date, and we just waited for uh, the promotion to start, and uh, and that's it. <laughs> and then I have to say that uh, everyone was is um, a big fan of Frontiers because uh, you know they have all the biggest name in their rock scene. So uh, you know, Ten, uh, Toto, Wesnick. All the other big, uh, big, biggest band in the, in the world. So, uh, can you imagine our our idea to be part of this family of all the band that you followed since you were a, a child? A child. Yeah, I mean that's got to be an incredible feeling being able to grow up listening to those bands and also now being able to be a part of that same label. Yeah, yeah, almost unbelievable. So. Of, of course, with how amazing the passage is for me, and it's quickly becoming one of my favorite albums of 2016, I'm pretty sure it's going to be near the top on my 2016 best of list. Has there been any talk about what you guys want to do in the future as far as writing, or is that too early yet? Mm, I, I didn't get the, the last part of the question, sorry. Oh, I, I just mean, uh, has there been any talks about the next album yet, or are you guys uh, just fully thinking about the passage? Well, okay, no. Um, to be honest, um, we are thinking about the release or maybe uh, a live DVD because we have, um, uh, it's not probably a new album right now, but uh, we have a lot of live material taken from the Japanese shows of the last two years, and then we are going to be part of the Frontiers Metal Festival, so we would like to to do a very interesting release in the next year, so I think all the fans can be can be surprised about this this new release. And then I think we we will start thinking about the new album. I think at the end of the of this live production, um, you know, we we want, we want to concentrate a bit on the on the passage. We don't we don't want to to cancel out with a new album too too fast because we we, we want people. Uh, we want people to appreciate the passage uh, in 100 percent you know and I, I think people need need time because <laughs> uh, uh, in these days uh, uh, there are a lot of releases uh, every every day so um, I, I think the passage is a great album and people need to listen for a bit this album oh I very much agree and this is one of those albums that when people actually do have the time to be able to sit down and listen to it it'll be a fantastic experience for them because it does show this new life of the band with so much full dynamics and songwriting and just this fresh life into the band and I don't think that if people give it the chance I don't think they're gonna be disappointed thank you thank you really thank you I appreciate it <laughs> Oh, not a problem. Well, once again, thank you for taking the time to do this interview. Uh, again, I'm relatively new to the band, but I love what you guys have done through your discography so far, and I absolutely love what you guys are doing with The Passage coming out next Friday through Frontiers. Before we're done, is there anything else you'd like to mention that I haven't brought up yet? Uh, what can I say? No, I, I think you covered almost everything, and uh, I, I thank you for your time, Josh, and you have been really kind of you, and uh, uh, I, I'm really happy to discover uh, that, that you are now maybe a new fan of DGN, so I hope a lot of people can do w what you've done, so thanks a lot. <laughs>